This the conference tale. will now be recorded. Thanks, Carol. Um, You're welcome. You read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so just remember that. Betty, I have you to do... say hi to Betty. Sorry. Hi, Betty DeBerry. Hi, oh, she girl. made it. Hey. Yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you. All right. Um, just remember to turn, and I'll try to remind you to turn your uh, cutters off. Um, we did use, I did use the circular attachment um, to put the rick rack on the circle and then to um, create the circle itself. And if you're not familiar with the circle attachment, this is what it looks like. And if you don't have one, um, then you'll need to draw your circle and stitch on the line. Uh, I ended up with my circle a little bit bigger than the circle that are in the instructions. It doesn't really matter. All I the, the end result was that I had a little bit more margin out here. She has you cut a six inch circle and I set mine to sew at a six inch. So it's just a little bit bigger than um, the circle that's in the instructions. But I'll tell you where the um, attachment was set and so forth. The thing you need to be careful of is that you, you have to be gentle when you use that circular attachment because if you pull on it very hard, this little thing gets out of position and then your circle ends up lopsided. Ask me how I know. <laughs> All right. And Carol mentioned something about the easy way to make a, a shaped applique, and this applies to other shapes, not only circles. But once you've sewn the rickrack onto the circle, you're going to take a piece of fusible cutaway mesh stabilizer. This one happens to be pink color, but I, I don't know if you can see that the this side is shiny, this side is not. The side shiny side is the fusible side. <clears throat> Once you're, you've sewn your circle, and these this is not on the apron when you're doing this. The, the circle is made and then sewn onto the apron. So what happens is, pretending this is not on the apron, you will place your fusible mesh on top of your piece of fabric with your rickrack sewn on the circle, but you will make sure that your fusible side, the shiny side, is down against your embroidery. Then you will stitch that around again, the same place where you stitched uh, <clears throat> your rickrack on, and then you will trim it, and then you will cut a slit in your stabilizer and turn it right side out. When you do that, the fusible side ends up on the outside. Then you can take and lay it on your apron and fuse it down and then stitch it down. And that it's not only for circular shapes, you can do anything. You can do hearts or four leaf clovers or squares or whatever with something that, you know, and it just makes a really nice even edge rather than trying to deal with tucking the edge under as you're sewing. <clears throat> Let's see. The instructions said to cut the instructions from Viking say to cut your binding strips um, on the straight of grain, or they said she said to cut strips the width of the fabric, which would make them on the straight of the grain. However, you have a curved seam or a curved edge here on the armhole of the apron to deal with. And something cut on a, the straight of grain is not going to come around that curve easily. So 
on the supply list, I asked you to cut them on the bias. So that would come on, you know, work on that curve easily. Um, the reason for lining the apron was first off, I think it makes a nice finish on the back, but if you had these these three strips here with the ends sticking out and you tried to hem that, that would be rather difficult. So lining it is an easy solution to deal with that. It gives the apron a little more body too. Um, when you're doing your decorative, choosing your decorative stitches for your bands, um, this I did on the FOF and then I hated myself when I was picking the stabilizer out of those snowflakes. So you might keep that in mind when you're picking your stitches to go on your bands that, you know, you've got stabilizer on the back that should come out before you put them on the apron. Um, if you don't have the quilt binder attachment to put your, to make your ties and the armhole bindings, um, then you can just fold your um, bias fabric and iron it like double fold bias tape. And if you have a question on how to do that, I, I would be more than happy how to show you. Okay, I think that's the end of my list. Does anybody have any questions or some of that didn't make sense to you? Are we going to put the lining on and sew the decorations or do the lining after you sew the? The lining is the next to the last step. The very okay. last step is putting your binding and ties on. Okay, that's what I thought. I just want to check. I don't have it That's cut out. Fine. You don't have it cut out? Well, you got you got a little bit of time there. Okay. Okay. Uh, and did you find the pattern for the armhole in the directions? Yes. Okay. Anything else? All right. Um, <clears throat> let me. Um, for anybody who has not um, sewn the stitches that are these that are in this medallion where it has the piece of fabric in here, um, as go ahead and get set up for embroidery. And as you embroider, the machine will stop and you want to hand wheel the needle down so that it <clears throat> is in your fabrics. And then, where's my sample? Okay, okay. I made this super sample, right? Pretend this is your needle in your fabric and this is your piece of fabric that's going to be your applique piece. When you put it, it's going to come into the needle from behind, but you don't want it just flat like that. You want that piece of fabric to slightly buckle up against the needle. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. be because when that needle comes up and takes that first stitch, then that fabric will flatten and that first stitch will be on the fabric. If it's just right up against the needle, and the needle comes up, it takes a stitch, it can miss the fabric. So you want do want that to, to buckle just a tad behind the needle. All right? And you'll be in embroidery, so you're just going to use your start-stop button to continue. But it will, um, it will stop for you to put down the fabric for each one of those hearts. And when you get around, the circle and you're ready to put the last piece of fabric on, you might need to trim a little bit of the excess from the first one off so that it doesn't end up in the last one, if that makes sense. Okay. So those parts are applique, right? Yes, they're applique. Okay. 
And do they, they have steamacin or something behind them? Is that what you had said? Yes, that's. I, I always put steamacin behind them because you're once once you've stitched down this little square piece, then you're going to come back and, and trim it fairly close to your stitching, and that okay. makes it a raw edge applique. And I prefer to have something like steamacin under it to fuse it to the fabric once I've trimmed it. I have steamacin too. Would that work okay? That's perfect. <clears throat> okay. Because the steam is the two means that it's sticking on both sides. So when you put it down, it it will grab onto your base fabric, and that'll be great. Okay. All right. Any other questions? So in our package, is that what the, these strips were for? For those, or was this for the this? bottom strips. I don't know what these strips were for. Okay, those are to make, okay, <clears throat> those strips are to make your appliques and if you're doing it on the Epic, the pop-up stitches. Let me turn this light on and see if that helps. See, see these pop-up stitches and you have that plaid fabric? If you choose to use that fabric to make those kind of pop-up stitches, and then the sparkly fabric was used here and also in the hearts. But you can use them wherever you want them. Okay, and then what we use the... Um white stripe fabric to make big one for making the bands, right? This one? Yes. The one that looks like wood? Yes, that's the ones that the bands were made out of and the circle for embroidery. Right. Okay, thanks. Sure. Anything else for right now? Are we go ahead and get your and the circle does fit in your 120 by 120 hoop. So okay. um, are we hooping the fabric and the stabilizer and the two stabilizers? Um I'm sorry, do that again, Lee. Are we gonna hoop the fabric and both stabilizers? Or are we gonna lay it on top? Um, I probably did a stitch, uh, you know, based around design. Okay, thank you. So what Thanks. stabilizer are we hooping? Um, a tear away. Okay. And then we should have the, um, uh, the fusible on the back before we hoop it, right? Yes, put a, uh, iron a fusible tear away on the back of your square to hoop and then independently hoop a plain piece of tear away. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, Liz. Good morning. Do nice to have, are, are you doing this for the false machine too? Yes, ma'am. I came uh, late. The, that's why I, I sent you the, or Carol sent you the embroidery design because you don't have those applique kind of stitches in your machine. The one that has the, um, the that circle that she sent me? Yes. The circle design, is that what we're putting in now? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Okay. And you, gotcha. need, you need some little pieces of fabric cut for the hearts. Okay, okay. I have to get stuff together. Okay. And that's where you said you want to use this 10 by 12 embroidery hoop? The 120 embroidery hoop. The one, oh, the small one. Yeah, the 120 by 120 is perfect. Okay. 
Okay, got it. Now I'll get now I'll get it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and if you have a question of how to do the applique things, please ask. Judy, if the on the biking instructions, the cutting is that good? Can we cut out based on those instructions? Um uh, well, cut based on what on the supply list to start with. What supply list? The one that was on the internet. All right, I'll have to look for it. Thanks. Okay. Um, basically, it's the in, the same as the instructions um, for her stuff, except. For your binding, cut it on the bias instead of with the fabric strips. And then she was specific by color. Um, and you can interpolate that where she says fabric C pink nine, one and a half squares for applique hearts. Um, and she's assuming you're going to use the stitches that she used. Um, I had a little bit of difference of opinion with her on that because she has flowers and hearts that are lying on their side, and I didn't like that. So you can pick stitches which um, aren't lying on their side if you would like. And she also used um, <clears throat> some different, a different stitch that, than I did for the, um, what she called the pop-up one, the one that I showed you that had the, um, this one here. I used a different, she used a flower that had an applique blossom or a pop-up blossom and applique leaves i didn't do that because that one was lying sideways also okay is there a way to if since the registration is closed is there a way to get the supply list anymore from society well it should be right if you scroll up from where it says registration closed I could see it yesterday. Well, I'll look again. I thought all I saw was uh, that I had you... to I had to had to scroll up from when you clicked on the class and it yeah. said registration closed at the bottom. If you could scroll up above that, if not, I can send it to you. Send it to me too, Judy and Betty, because I I didn't um, obviously I didn't get it. I I didn't get any of this stuff till the last second, so. Okay, so while uh, other people are getting, any other questions right now, or I'll go try to send some emails. I'd like the I picture, have too. The, I have the supply list, but I didn't save the picture, so it's hard for me to see the little picture. I have it printed out, but. Because I got the email this morning with the supply list and printed it out. Uh, this shouldn't have gotten a supply list this morning. You got instructions. Yeah, I got those. It has sewing supplies and all the instructions this morning when I checked my email. Why are you special? <laughs> I don't know, because I didn't find it before that. So I was trying to find stuff it. this morning. Yeah. Well, you got Am I morning? It was just the. Uh, design and the, the Viking instructions and duties, but. That was what I, yeah, that's what Carol sent out this morning. Yeah. Right. There is kind of a, there is a supply list on the front of the instructions. Mm -hmm. That's what I got, because I didn't find the other. Yeah, but the individual supply list, <clears throat> was a little, uh, you know, the one that got posted on the website. Okay, 
That one I that one I didn't see. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Cool. Well, the difference, the big difference in what's printed out in the Viking instructions and the one that was on the our website is the fact that you should cut your bindings and the fabric for your bindings and ties on the bias, on not the bias. with the fabric. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And Judy, I just have a question. Am I supposed to cut a circle or just put a piece of fabric in and let it make the circle for me with the embroidery design? Uh, just um, the size fabric you said to cut? Just a square of fabric. Yeah. Just put that in? Yes. And then yeah, it'll do the embroidery and then we'll turn it into a circle. That's why we have the circle attachment. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So applique stitches. Let's see. Um, let's see. Make sure you turn your cutter off. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing the circle first. You're doing the embroidery first, yes. Okay. And if you will look on, and I, she doesn't have page numbers on here, but this is about the third page of the in, Viking instructions. She has some pictures um, showing putting the fabrics down for the hearts. Oh, okay. So did you say that we have the let the words and the heart somewhere to do this with? Do that again, Marilyn. I said, so we're going to do the circle. And it says bon appetit and has hearts around it. Yes. Do we have that embroidery to use? Uh, it got sent to you this morning. OK, that I didn't find. You should have gotten three things this morning. My okay. page and a half of notes, the yeah. embroidery design, and the Viking instructions. Okay, I'm gonna have to go find that because I don't have the design. Okay, it should be in your email. Okay. It's a VP3 design. All right. And Betty DeBerry, I'm going to try to send this to you. OK, fine. <clears throat> All right. No, no, no. Uh. Do you want it at Comcast or iCloud, Betty? Comcast. Uh, just a minute. Com Comcast. Okay. Okay. okay, to get the design, I'm going to have to go to my computer, I guess. Yes. I got to I got to get out of here and just minimize the meeting. Okay, let's see. Okay, Betty, I sent it. Hey, Judy, Judy. Yeah, hon. I lost my design. I can't find it. You lost your design? Yes, I put it on a stick, but it doesn't show it. 
Um, do you still have your email that you could go back? No, I just looked and it's gone. <laughs> I, don't know what I, I don't know what I did. <laughs> All right, give me a minute. I'll send it to you. Okay. Uh, on the Gomer Etsy, yeah. You sent me an email, right? Yes, I am in a minute. I'm sending okay. Mary fly list. Okay. And now we're going to do Liz Gomer. And Judy. 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 Yes. Can you send me a brain? Uh, sorry, I have to have one. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, Liz, it's on its way. So, Judy, how do I get the design to my machine? Um, <laughs> put it on a stick. Copy it. Stick on your computer. Yeah. And I then take that to your machine. Or put it in your cloud on your computer. Okay. Yeah. All right. This I don't know how to do. Okay, you're seeing it on your stick. I mean, on the email. Well, no. It comes up on a petite, and then it goes to my 6D and shows it in the hoop. All right, then um, go to. Uh, you're in 6D. It opened it. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. There. Then you can export it as a VP3 file but export it to a stick. You know how to do that? No, I don't. All right, over, okay, you, the, make sure your design is selected. Over under file, up on oh, okay. the left-hand side. Okay, here's huh? export. Okay, I found export. Right. Okay, click on, do you have a stick inserted in your computer? There. You got a stick in there? I'm getting there. Okay. Tell me when. <laughs> All right, let's see. I find one that has that works. I got it, Judy. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Mary, did you get yours? Yes, I did. Thank you. You're welcome. Betty DeBerry. Yes, ma'am. I got mine, but I'm trying to get it up. Okay. okay. I've got my stick. I've got my stick in. All right. Judy, uh, you've got to when you cut when you turn your cutter off, it's going to tell you to cut your. Um, it's gonna your machine's gonna stop on the icon and then it's gonna you ask you to cut your threads and then you just have to start again. I don't know if anybody that has an icon knew that. It's just because the cutter's off. What kind of things are you doing so that Yeah, that happens all the time. Right. Well, I didn't know if I mean some people might not know that when their cutter's off. I was just kind of giving it as a um, FYI. Okay. Thanks. Okay, Marilyn. All right. All right, so you clicked on export? I did. All right, now up at the top of the window, does it, it say it, you want to export it as a VP3 file? Yeah, there's does a VP3 VP? there, yeah. Okay, so then um, whether it says okay or next down at the bottom, click on that. Okay. 
Now it just says uh, the design. I'm sorry. VP3 says VP3 is unavailable. What's tell me what's it's it says. Do you still have the export box up? No. I, okay. It, yeah, I I've never done this, so <laughs> I may not get to do this. Okay. Well, don't, I can't, I can't figure it out. Don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let me get myself. Yeah. Have this memorized. Because I don't want everybody to have to wait for me. No, they can go ahead. They don't have to wait for you. Okay. That's not a problem. Okay, because I went to file and it came up with VP3 and I hit that. And it just tells me it's not avail unavailable. But I've got USB drive F at the top. Wait, 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 please. Come on. Man. Okay, third quarter, twenty twenty. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so you went to file and you said export, and then it said VP3 at the top, right? Marilyn? Yes, it does say the drive, it says USB and then drive. You, okay, down at the bottom. What am I looking for? Marilyn? Yeah. What am I looking for? Okay. Where it, it said export at the top of the box that popped up in your screen, and then it said file format, Husqvarna Viking Fox VP3. Yeah. I pushed it. And then you click on. Huh? Click on what? Click on OK at the bottom of that little box. There's no OK. All right. Um, what are you seeing on your screen? <laughs> well, it shows me well, at the top in the box, box, long box top says USB drive F, and then it has desktop downloads, documents, pictures, and all that stuff. Everybody mute their microphones except Marilyn. Thank you. Okay, Marilyn. Okay, yeah, it because it comes up with USB drive and then it just has you know the deck desktop downloads documents pictures and then VP3. Oh, okay, but it okay, so it it kicked you when you plugged in your drive, it kicked you into uh, File Explorer. You need to get back into your software. Okay. <laughs> so can you just close that screen? Like yep. the the X over on the right hand side of that screen. Okay, I did. Okay, okay now I've are you got, back to software? Now I've got my 6D and it has file format and then it has combine, remove, overlap, all that stuff. And then it this this screen, it's a little one on top of my hoop, and there is an uh -huh. okay. So if I push OK, does it say that little one that's on top of your hoop? Does it say export in the top of it? Well, yeah, I just went to a place that a place has a key. That has mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. This says file name Bonin Petit, and it has export beside beside it. Well, where do you do that? Okay. Can can you close that box that's on top of your your 
uh, hoop for right now? It's gone. With, it's gone. Now, what are you seeing? Just the hoop in there? I just, the screen? I just see the hoop and I'm in my 6D. Okay. Now, if you go up to the left hand corner and click on the file, the word file, yep. and it drops down a bunch of stuff. Yep. Can you click on export there, please? Okay. All right. And then you get another, you get a pop up box on top of your design, right? Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. And that, and then it says. At the top, it says export. The next line says file format, and it says yep. VP3. Yep. Okay, yep. and then down, down yep. at the bottom, it says OK. Yep. Click on OK, please. All right, and then another screen pops up. Uh huh. Okay. And it, it's that screen is where you're going to tell it where you want it to export your file. Two. Okay, so <laughs> this came down. At the like, top, it should say save as. Yes? It says save in. Okay, it's so save now in. You, have to, you have to find your stick over on the left hand side. Okay. And you said mm -hmm. it was F? Yeah. Okay. So I, it, okay, I found it. So I just click on the drive F. Yes. Okay, I got it. All right, and now up it, and then you should. Um, it says then at the bottom a couple of lines up. It says file name. Yep. You can yep. type in a name or yep. did it? It has Bon Appetit on it. Okay, great. And then over at the very bottom, at the right hand side, you have a box with export in it. Yep. Click on export, please. Okay, I did. Okay, and now what happened? Then this, that box disappeared. Okay, and then you should be able, it should be <clears throat> on your stick. Okay. I will try it. Thank you. Let me go see. You're you. welcome. Judy? Yes? Here, I'll turn my, my camera back on. So I did the, I did the first um, part, but I have to take it out because it didn't go far enough over, so I don't think I quite understood the position it was supposed to be in to cover up the heart. Uh, tell me what happened, please. Well, I have my one edge didn't get it didn't get tacked down, so I didn't quite understand where I'm supposed to put the fabric. I tried to put it behind, but I don't think I had it at the right angle. You have to put the <clears throat> the fabric behind the needle. Right. It has, it has to be. <clears throat> remember when? <clears throat> excuse, excuse me. I had my <clears throat> bamboo skewer, skewer and my piece of green fabric here. Right. Right. <clears throat> that you have to put your piece of fabric square behind the needle and let it buckle just a little. Right, I tried that, but I, um, <clears throat> so I, I'm trying to figure out how is it going to cover it? So it's kind of on an angle when it, when it gets there, it's not like straight in front of it or straight behind it. So anyway, I'll keep, I'll probably just keep trying until I get it, but I had to take my first one out. Maybe if okay. you can just <laughs> show us on your machine, you have the perfect spot right there. Lee, I had to put mine to the side because I did the first it's one. Like, yeah. And it didn't cut it either. So it's really, it's almost, you want the needle to start right if you look on your screen, but your fabric is really to the side. It's not as, as much in back as some of these are. And I think okay. it's, the heart kind of comes, like you said, at an angle. Right. <clears throat> Well, it didn't work for me. I had to take my first set of stitches out too. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Leslie. 
That's good. That's what we're here for. All right, ladies. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah, I had my fabric cut a little bigger and I didn't have that problem. <laughs> <clears throat> I also left the paper on my um, on my little pieces, so that reminded me I have to take the paper off. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that does that makes it easier to iron it down. Did you find your design on the machine, Marilyn? I did. Now I can't see a picture Fantastic. of all of you. <laughs> yeah, I got Fantastic. it. Fantastic. So. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, now we'll have we can have a test on that. All <laughs> right. <laughs> My husband's standing there talking to me. So, but I'm trying to get your picture back and I can't find it. Oh, there it is. All right. I got you back. Okay. Yeah, I just don't see you. Yeah, I turned me off. Well, why'd you do that? <laughs> now all you see is my son room and me going from the computer to my sewing machine. Yeah. Miss DeBerry, did you got your stuff? No, I'm still trying to get the design. Did it not come through with the email? It came through, but I can't, I cannot get it to activate. Came through on the phone. I can't get it to activate the design. So then I went on to the computer to get it and i can't even get your email to me on the computer this is betty's day to not be doing this i think but i'm i'm still struggling i'm sorry <laughs> me too <laughs> oh, your dear. computer doesn't like emails <clears throat> not today i mean i had to call carol three times oh, oh. He didn't get the the um, message to me, but but the, but the message that has the design, I cannot open up. Everything else else opened up fine. I can't get that to open up. Um. Yeah, um, I'm still working on it. Do you want, Betty, do you want me to send you just the design in an email? Would that help? I don't know. Yeah, maybe it would. I mean, Let's I could try that. Now. Okay, okay, sorry. No problem. <clears throat> Hey, Judy. Yes? Do you use the single hole foot or plate or the zigzag plate? Zigzag. I'm sorry? Uh, the single hole plate would be best. Okay, I got that, but I can't get my circular thing hooked to it. You don't want your circular, you want to be in embroidery, honey. Oh, embroidery, okay. All right. Okay, Betty, it's on its way.
<clears throat> Betty Russ, are you doing okay? Well, I really don't know what I'm doing, but this is supposed to be applique, right? Yes, ma'am. Well, so, I'm doing, I'm just, I'm doing it, but I'm doing it my way because I have no idea what I'm <clears throat> Okay, the mich did you turn your cutter off? Yes, but. Okay, but what, hon? What's frustrating you, Liz? Oh, well, I'll do it my way. <laughs> okay, when the machine stops, <clears throat> you should hand wheel the needle down and then put your piece of fabric behind the needle. So it kind of buckles up behind the needle. If you look at the instructions, if you printed those out this morning, on well, page is, the third page. these instructions are for the viking machine right yes but the pictures will work on either machine <clears throat> um if you look at like starting at step 31 which is on the third page and the pictures yeah. that go with that that might help okay okay Okay, I'll work on this, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm here. You can holler. Betty DeBerry, did you get the design? I get the design on the iPhone, but when I try and open it, it, it sends me to the journey folder and when i go there well I you can't, can't do it on the phone Betty, you know. have to do it on the I computer know. i know but meanwhile back on the farm i'm not getting the email i haven't gotten an email on my computer and it shows that i'm i'm hooked up to the internet huh. um i haven't gotten one this morning i sent so far i've sent you two yeah i know and they've come through on the phone but they don't come through on the on the um computer on on the laptop Betty, That's true. check your spam folder go in okay go, go into your spam yeah okay junk, junk folder yep yep I will. It may have got dumped in there. Yep. Hey, Leslie. How goes it? It goes good, but I am finding that I am never putting the scrap fabric behind the needle. It's kind of, sometimes it kind of goes to the side. Sometimes it goes in front. But if I don't kind of look at the screen and see where it's going to stitch, I get it in the wrong spot. But it is not going behind the needle at all. Thanks, Leslie. That's helpful because I'm trying to do it again. And do it again. <laughs> it goes a long way in front of the needle. That's the problem. I yeah. get my my cross stitch is at the beginning of the uh, at the top. Of, where the little line before the heart is it starts there so the little line the heart and the line after are all on the on the cloth yeah i'm doing heart number six and now is the first time that i'm actually putting the fabric behind the needle but up to this point they but if did. I put the fabric down where it says for me to put the fabric down then it it stitches out the 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 little lines before the heart and the line after the heart it's all on the fabric. Yeah, no, mine isn't doing that. Well, mine's doing that. But if you look, if I look at the picture on the instructions, they've got the little crosshatch in, at the bottom of the heart. So should I move? That's where your needle should stop. 
that's where it stops and where you're supposed to put the fabric. And then, then the fabric goes, covers where your heart is going to be. That's yeah, the like, bottom of the heart. That's so, the is, point, is, right? so if you're going to stitch out the, like, the little stem and the heart, it's going to stop. I'm going to put my fabric and then it's going to go back and do the heart. It's, right? it's not going to stitch a, a heart until you put the fabric down. It's going to stitch us. A, a, Wait, one second. It's, it's gonna going to stitch a, okay. It's going to stitch a straight line down the center. Okay, because here's some I stitched without fabric. Okay. So it's going to stitch, it's going to stitch this little swirly line, and then it's going to stitch the straight line and stop where my finger is. Okay. The needle right there and then you're okay. going to put the fabric there okay over where the heart would be okay and then it'll stitch that heart okay all right i'll try that so almost actually in front of the needle instead of behind the needle i think yeah so now that it looks like number seven lee is going to be behind the needle as was number six up to that okay. point all over the place Okay, thank you. I think your idea of looking at the picture helps a lot. <laughs> thank you. Eddie, would you show that again? I got I got sidetracked. Thanks. This one, Mary. Uh, where to put the fabric? Is this what you want to see? Yeah. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna stitch this little curved line, then it's gonna stitch the straight line, and then you're gonna put the fabric down to cover that straight line. And then it's gonna stitch the heart. So you're putting the fabric in front of the needle. Actually, basically, yes. Yes, okay. that worked. I just did it depends. That it depends on where the needle, you know, it depends on where the heart is in the circle. Right. Okay. When you get over to the ones here, the bottom of the heart, it's always going to go. The edge of the fabric is always the needle is at the bottom of the heart. Let me say it that way. Okay. okay. So if you're over here, then your fabric is going to go behind the needle if you're here it's going to be more to the side here it's going to be you know it's going to turn Probably the heart, so but that's the main thing you're always going to cover that that straight line should be the middle of your fabric thank you okay and that really helped judy that middle of the line is consistent that took me a while to figure that out but that is it's consistent. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I just, that really helped when um, I just was watching the picture and that did it too, but I'd been putting them in the wrong place. But that straight line really does kind of guide you the best, I think. Okay. Any luck, Betty DeBerry? No. I have, I have received no emails on my laptop today, and I've checked junk mail, I've checked drafts, scent, trash, everything. Nothing has happened today. They That's really them. very frustrating. Yes, it is. Then do you want us to put our cutter back on when we're done with that? Um. Well. Yeah. No. Um, you can have no leave your cutter off for the well, let's see. <clears throat> That's the only embroidery we're doing, isn't it? Yeah. Or uh, were you talking about the letters? I already did the <clears throat> lesson for the letters. I, the letters were first. Okay. So you're done with embroidery for today. I am. 
<clears throat> Once you have that embroidered, you're done with embroidery for today. Okay. The rest of it is sewing. Okay. And probably I shouldn't do any ironing down until I cut off my extra fabric. <laughs> right? Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. yeah. You, you yeah. want to trim your heart. <laughs> I almost did it the don't, other don't day. Don't iron until you do trim. <laughs> yeah. It takes the village, Leslie. Yes, it does. <laughs> Betty Hoffman, are you still there? I think we lost. I her. am. Oh, I am. How's it going? Are you, um, so let's not talk about how it's going. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Betty? Well, I just haven't had, I need some help with my machine to get things set up and all kinds of stuff. I, the computer part of it is a problem. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to have some one-on-one, -on -one, but it's okay. I'm working around it. I'm just going to work on the apron and um, do what I can do. Okay. Well, don't be bashful, please. I won't, but I do need to make an appointment sometime to come talk with one of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Betty, this is a very advanced class. This is one of our more advanced classes, actually. <laughs> yeah, and I, I worried about that when I was um, mm -hmm. signing up for it, but um, it's okay. I'm That's how we learn. Uh, exactly just, how we learn. Uh, yeah. I just had uh, some prep work that I should have done before this to um, be able to understand that first part, so it's okay. I'm just glad that you already programmed it for us. Thank you. I would have taken a lot longer <laughs> to program it to start with. <laughs> Try all we would have gotten done today. But we have the instructions now so we can do it. It's the great thing. That's right. You have the instructions. But don't forget, Lee, that there are no tie stitches. So you do want to take that stitch into programming and put a tie stitch at the beginning and the end and then save that stitch and use that one that you have saved to build your design. And when that you say, into pro yeah, I understand what you're saying, but when you say into programming, are you meaning on the machine or are you meaning our software? Yes, ma'am. No, on, on the machine. Oh, so we can actually add tie stitches to the machine. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wow. Now that would be an interesting class, but that would be all we would get to do, I'm sure. <laughs> well, we we kind of did some of that in boot camp. Yeah. I believe. It's fun. But I'm we fun. can review it when Carol does her, you know, we do our classes again. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Judy, when you're trimming these, do you usually leave it in the hoop or take it out? Um, because I'm finding it kind of challenging, and I don't want to get too you close. Can, you can, you're going to take it out anyhow, Les. You can take it out. Okay. Because yeah, some of them get kind of close to the edge. Yeah, and I don't want to be cutting those stitches. Yeah. 
And yeah, you, you want to, you know, you probably want to trim like an eighth of an inch away from them or something. And do you have it looks face? really pretty you can trim right up to the stitches, but I usually end up cutting stitches, so yeah. that doesn't make me happy. <clears throat> and what scissors do you like to use? I'm trying to figure out. I've tried two or three different ones this morning. Um, a lot of times I like my little, these little snip, you know, these little guys. Oh, the Jenny Haskins snips? I've yeah. Tried those. I'll try those. Okay. Because they come, you can get really close with those. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, another one that's, that's really good is um, these heritage scissors, oh, these mm -hmm. little guys. Uh-huh. When you're looking for something to trim appliques, what you want is something that's sharp all the way to the point, and you want the blade to be thin. Thin, okay. So not this, I was just using- or At least that's my criteria. The K Buckley's that I was just using, that I use for stuff, um, kind of had that razor, and that was eating my fabric a little bit. Um, the serrated edge is good. It is. Is that what you call the razor? Yeah. I just wasn't doing as well because um, they're not curved. Yeah. The 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 little thread snip kind of ones work really well. Um, <clears throat> the um, quilt, these quilters select applique scissors work pretty well. Hmm. Okie doke. And sometimes uh, it depends on what day it is. Sometimes one works for me and one doesn't work for me. <laughs> so it's good to have options. I agree. Yeah, they all seem to get dull so fast. It's yeah. the hard part with this because especially when we're cutting multiple layers. Yes. Hard. They do get dull and um, supposedly heritage scissors will sharpen for you. I haven't um, looked online to find out the information but they will sharpen any brand and they will also sharpen ones, the little ones with the curved blades. Oh, wow. And Sherry McTavish has had a lot of her scissors sharpened by them and she swears by it. Okay, so let me know when you're ready to go on and deal with the circular attachment and we'll do a little demo here. Do you think the circular attachment would work on by Brilliant? Oh, Maybe yes. I'm, okay, so I'm not gonna have to take my uh, machine apart to put it on then, good. Thank you. I thought it would. It works. Well, you can leave it. You don't have to take anything apart. Um, you mean as far as embroidery? Yeah, I have the brilliant all set up, so I'll just use it on there. I do the oh, well, you know, I'm my embroidery unit is on, and I'm going to use my circular attachment on it. Other than changing the foot, would be okay. all you do. Yeah, and it have to change the plate too. Well. As long as you're stitching in the middle, it doesn't matter. But if yes, if you need to move your needle because you're just going to straight stitch. Okay. Anyway, I'm almost done with the embroidery. Okay. Finally, the second to last one was actually to the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry that that was confusing. No, it's fine. It's, this is learning. It's good. I'm doing my last one. 
That's why we have you as the teacher, because otherwise we can do it all by ourselves. So once the embroidery is done, you take it out of the hoop and trim it, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Marilyn Vapp, how are you doing? Wave your hand if you're okay. I can see you. Okay. <laughs> How's Edna doing? I'm doing great, but I'm going to have to leave because I'm having, there's some family issues happening that I got to take care of. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Well, I'm almost done putting on my hearts. So I think I can figure out after that what I need to do. Okay, if not, you know where I am. Yeah, I, I will get in touch with you. Uh, thanks, I'll, I'll talk to you later. All right, be safe. I hope everything is okay. Bye, Edna. Bye, Edna. Bye, I'll talk to you guys later. Okay. Bye. Sue Patha, are you okay? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> Is it I'm, giving I'm you working a on my heart. You're working on your hearts? Okay. Yes. We lost Betty DeBerry. Peggy Wolf, are you doing okay? Did you run off? <laughs> Well, this gray fabric that we're using for the hearts is the sparkly grunge, right? Yes, isn't it pretty? This one is. Some of the colors I didn't care for, but I like this one. Yeah, I think they've, <clears throat> it's been sold out at least once at the store and they got more in, so. You know, and maybe because I was looking at the whole bolt, not thinking in small pieces too, that probably made a difference. Yeah, that, <clears throat> that very well does. Yeah.
Judy, how did you do technique when you guys are in the middle of your um, stop hop or whatever? Um, do again, please, Liz. Lee. I was thinking that you have shop hop going on now too, right? But that's at the store. I know, I know, but I know. Um, you're not at the store then. Do you want me to get it? Oh, I sneak into the store when everybody's gone, right? I'm sorry, Mary. You only sneak into the store after everybody's left, right? You stay home. I stay home, and I if I go to the store, it's usually early in the morning. Yeah. Okay, is everybody pretty much done with the embroidery? Are you ready to think about the circle? I am whenever you're ready, Judy. Yes. I'm just doing my cutting on the embroidery. So yeah, we're ready whenever you are. Me too. Mary, Marilyn, are you almost ready? Okay. How about Judy Evans? How's she doing? Haven't heard your mic's off, hon. Judy Evans, your mic is off. I can't hear you. Okay, I can see you make that. I can see you do that. <laughs> okay. So, this is our circular attachment, and um, it has a gauge on it with numbers. The top number is metric, and the bottom number is inches. And the little slider will click into the metric numbers, but it does not click into the inch numbers. So if we want to make a six inch circle, we can set the slider on the six, but it's not clicking into that number. It, it's going to, closest thing is going to be the 15, which is between the 14 and the 16 there. And um, I would recommend that you use a number where it clicks into place because even when it clicks into place, it's easy to move if you tug on your fabric. So I'm, I'm suggesting that you use that click around between 14 and 15. And that is half of the size of your circle. There are two little ears. I don't know if you can see them. Let me turn it upside down. There are two little ears on the circular attachment and there are two holes in the throat plates for your machine and those little ears sit down in the hole and the easiest way is to get one in and then kind of flex the circular attachment to line up the second one and get it down into the hole and that's what holds it onto your machine and remember that you do not want to use your scissors button on your machine when you have your circular attachment on because those little ears on there stick down, can stick down through your throat plate and interfere with your cutter. 
which we don't need that kind of help. And you can use almost any foot with your circular attachment. You can use any stitch as long as the stitch does not, the feed dogs do not move sideways with it. As long as they only move backward and forward, you can even use the decorative stitches that are on your machine with your circular attachment. Um, for what we're doing now, we're just going to use a straight stitch. So that's not going to be a problem. <clears throat> uh, you need to find, whoopsie, let me get this out of here. It came with this very special little tool, which is what holds your fabric on your um, attachment. And that pin goes through the very center of your fabric. So for your embroidery, you want to find the center of your circle, not necessarily the center of your fabric. You want the center of your circle. And you want to put the pin through the fabric and your stabilizer. If you want, you can take off that um, second layer of stabilizer and just leave that fusible on. Or you can leave both of them on and take it off later. So once you've found the center of your circle and you put the pin through it, the pin is then, and it's hard to see, because um, the pin is going to go into that little hole on that slider and that is your point of rotation for sewing the circle if you should ever lose that then any push pin that you buy at target dollar store wherever will work just as well so okay so the first how did you find your center? How did like, I find the center? Did you well, just on the circle? Um, no, on, on our circle, fabric. I would measure, you know, like measure across from heart to heart. Okay. Okay. And do it side to side, and then do it top to bottom to make make sure that you've got the true center. And once you put the pin in it and put it on the machine, then you can twirl it around and see if your foot is equidistant from your hearts as you go around, just as a little cross check. Okay. Are you going to show us then how to attach the rick rack? I'm going to try. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds, okay. sounds kind of hard. <laughs> huh? It sounds kind of hard. It's not hard. You need to take your time. And yeah. you also, when you start out, you need to leave a little tail because okay. it's and you're going to stop before you get all the way done. And you're going to take your rick rack and then you're going to seam it and then finish stitching it down. I don't know how else to do it to make it nice and tidy other than to do that. And this, I have this circle of rick rack because. I pulled and got my circle lopsided, so this circle of rickrack wasn't long enough 
to go around it when I had the circle the right size. Okay, so when you're doing your rickrack, I'm going to leave. It doesn't matter where you start. Um, I'm going to leave just maybe an inch and a half tail on my rickrack. And I'm using a straight stitch. I want to stitch with my needle down function on. And you know what? Come on, stop it. I'm going to switch my foot. I'm going to go to my open toe foot. Whatever that is. Judy, do you have that stabilizer on the top? Is that the one you were talking about putting on the top? Uh, no. No. That okay. stuff I was talking about putting on the top is when you have the rig rack on and you're ready to. <laughs> Make your circle to turn. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Actually, I'm going to use my narrow open toe clear foot, my seven millimeter one, but because I'm doing a straight stitch, it doesn't matter. All right. And when you sew the rick rack on, you want to sew, if I can get this where you can see this, you want to sew such that you're just barely catching um, the outside, um, what am I going to call the gullies? <laughs> these are points and these are gullies. You want to make sure that you're sewing all the way, but that you do catch it on the outside edge. Does that make sense? I'll, I'll try to show you. I've, I've got black thread in here, so hopefully you can and see that better. So I'm going to start this. What size stitch are you using? Sorry. Just the two and a half. Two and a half. Okay, thank you. Just the normal one. Okay. And okay, that one I'm. It takes some practice <laughs> and that I missed, okay. I'm, I'm trying not to pull on the, you know, the fabric. I'm just putting my fingers on it to try to keep it flat. And the real proof of the pudding is when I get around to the other side, if I end up at the same place I started. Okay, so now I'm going to stop here and I'm just going to back stitch just a couple of stitches. Judy? Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm without pictures. So you you stitched on the outside of the rickrack or the inside edge? I tried I tried to stitch Let's see. I tried to stitch closer to the outside than the inside uh, can you see okay. what i've done no i'm without pictures so oh you're without pictures i'm so sorry 
It's it's basically okay. kind of right down the middle, Sue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now I've stopped and I've got a an opening of about an inch and a half in there. And what I'm going to do before I take it off of the machine is to um, put a pin in there, take the two ends and put them together where I want to make a seam. And then I'm going to take my pin out and I'm going to maneuver, maneuver this such that I can... Um, I have to do it the other way. I have to turn my rick rack so I can. You can either make a seam, which is seeming impossible at this moment, or you can turn the ends under where they would meet and then just stitch over that, which is probably way easier than the way I'm trying to do it. Just, I wanted it to look like there was no seam in it, and that that's a possibility if you can can do that. But right now, I can't. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just going to trim my rick rack. So it overlaps, and then I'm going to tuck it under and sew across, putting it back on the circular attachment. That makes it. I do not have, do not know how the lady that wrote the instructions intended for us to do that. But if I just turn the end under. which I cut it a little short. Come on. Okay. Not backwards. Turn under. And yay, I ended up where I started. Okay. At this point, you've got your Rick Rack on. And she asks, tells you to turn it by hand, you know, take your stabilizer off and turn it over like that and then put it on the apron and stitch it down. Well, that makes, you know, you have to know where the edge of the circle is and it's to make a nice pretty circle. If you take the, fusible stabilizer that we talked about earlier and put the fusible side down on top of your embroidery and put it back on your circular attachment and just stitch around it It's going to stitch right where you were before on your circle. Is that the mesh stuff that you're using? That's the, yeah, me fusible cutaway mesh. Okay. Okay. And once I've done that, and I then I need to trim 
my I need to take my stabilizer off. Maybe. And trim my fabric as well as my fusible mesh stabilizer. And then I want to cut a slit into in that fusible mesh and turn it right side out. Okay, I'm not I'm not going to trim it just for time's sake, but then I'm going to separate the mesh and the fabric and cut a slit of mm, about two inches and then turn this right side out, maybe bigger. And when I turn it right side out, then the fusible part is on the outside. And I can lay that on my apron and just fuse it in place and then go back and stitch around right at the when you turn it then you have this the fusible side down and then you can just stitch right at the edge of the rickrack as well as having it fused and it makes and then you've got a perfect circle I think this would work great for, you know, if you had hearts or something, which are a bit of an irregular shape to um, make applique, you want a, an applique with a finished edge. That would work great because you could just sew it and then turn it right side out and iron it down and then stitch it. So that's kind of like, that's the easy way to make a perfect circle. Does that make sense? Great, thank you. I've been doing that for quilt labels too, to just flip them inside out like that. Uh -huh. That's a great idea for quilt Good. labels. Yeah. So Judy, you're putting the rickrack on the front of the embroidery, right? The embroidered, the embroidered part is face up as you're doing your circle. Right. And and the fusible part is against it. Right. Right. Thanks, Judy. That was great. Thank you also Thank for you, giving the colors of the thread. You know, I had all those threads. It was amazing. I was like, wow, this is great. So thank you. That was they, good. They blend perfectly with this kit. Yes. That's good. Now we'll see if it works for us. Yeah. I really love that embellished thread. It just looks <laughs> so shiny. Now can we pee, can we do this part with um, the embellished thread too? The construction or not? We should go back to cotton thread. Um, you can do it. It's uh, your embellished the yes, the embellished is a polyester, so that'd be fine if you don't want to change thread. Okay, thanks. And especially, you know, when you stitch this down, you know, with your kind of a top stitch at the edge of the rickrack, your embellish right. would be fine if you were trying to match it. Okay. Thanks. Mm-hmm. 
Tell me again what foot you decided to use when you stitched down the rick rack on the circular attachment, please. Okay, Mary, I used, I have a clear open toe foot that's a seven millimeter foot, but um, you got an open, a nine millimeter open toe foot with your Epic, if that's what you're, you're sewing on your Epic, right? Okay. Yes. I just used the clear one because I, I like to be able to see, and I was only doing straight stitches, so it didn't matter that it was a seven millimeter. Okay, thanks. Mm hmm So we can pretty much use all of our seven millimeter as long as we don't go more than seven millimeters, right? On our yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah, you're still getting that pop up message about it. Yeah. Every time you change this. Good. I thought so, but I just want to make sure. Sure. Just need to be careful. Want to see this, Judy? I didn't get it in the center. <laughs> well, it looks good. Pretty pretty. Wow. Well, yeah, but good job, Miss Bliss. Yeah, I didn't have one of your kits, so I'm just doing whatever, okay? That's fine. Yay. Looking good. Okay, bye. You always do good. You're always such a speed demon, Liz. <laughs> Isn't she? I don't know how she does it. I used the embellished repositional um, backing this time, and it definitely gives it a lot thicker look, which is kind of nice in this situation. Okay. I like it. Yeah, once you turn it right side out, um you really don't want to iron it with that few exposed fusible on the back until you have it in place on your apron because usually when we turn stuff right side out we like to iron it to make sure that you know it's turned all the way out wouldn't be a good idea in this situation Judy, you didn't use the IDT on the circle attachment, did you? I'm sorry? You didn't have your IDT down, did you, when you sewed on no. the 
No, I didn't. You could have. But okay. I did not. No. I did, and it worked pretty good. Yeah, I, it would should work either way. And Judy, how close did you say to cut then once we do this? Uh, I would do about a, a, you know, no smaller than a quarter of an inch. Okay. Seam and allowance. Then, okay. And then take. And you don't need to clip it because it's, you know, everything's going to go inside. Okay. And take the, all the stabilizer off before we turn it. Yes, please. I mean, the back stabilizer as well. Inside, I mean, the top. You, yeah, your chair away stabilizers. Yeah, okay. Your embroidery stabilizers. Let me put it that way. The ones you used for embroidery. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, perfect sense. Scary. She used some yellow fabric and a bright orange rickrack. That could make a really cute little sun.
Oopsie. Welcome back, Miss Betty DeBerry. Would you believe I now have the designs? <laughs> what do you have to do to get it? I had to go to Comcast and have them figure out what the heck was going on with my computer and why wasn't I getting any messages on my computer? I mean, this has been the day, hadn't it? I'm so sorry, but at why, least they got it fixed. Well, we hope so, and I'm so glad that Carol very valiantly uh, records it so I can do the darn thing. Because I've got the kid here at home. I want to do it. <laughs> well, good. Well, you know how to find yeah. me if you have questions. Oh, I know. God bless your little soul. You're so good to us. Okay, so now... Judy, where are you? <laughs> I'm here. Okay. So the rest the rest of this we just get designs from our machine to put on these strips. Yes. And I put follow these directions. Yeah, I gotta look for I have some blank aprons that I bought a long time ago. I gotta find one. Because it's kind of cute. I want to put this on there. I think that would be cute on like some tea towels too. Yeah. They turned out kind of pretty. Even though I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you always say that, but you always you always do great. And fast, as Mary noted. Okay, so now I just gotta find those that those those blanks or whatever and do these strips okay and then just pick up right. these hearts are these hearts the same that are on the circle on this strip um no, no those are different hearts a different stitch she used on those um, and those, all the stitches she used in the instructions are in the Viking. So, yeah, these are. All you need Viking. to find. I need to find. You stitches. don't have. Okay. Yeah, you need to find stitches in your icon. Okay. And you can use your ribbon stitches too, if you would like. Good. Or. Um, some of your stacking stitches if you wanted. Okay. Okay. Now I just gotta go look for those that we to put them on. Okay. Okay, and then you don't have to worry about the binding or ties if you're using a pre-made apron. Yeah. I just gotta find it. I had two of them. I haven't sure where I put them. I'm like you, Liz. <laughs> I had two of them. And I searched and searched and found them about 1030. <laughs> well, at least you found them, Judy. Right. <laughs> I just wished I'd looked there first. They were simpler to get to. <laughs> well, since I moved almost three years ago, there's things I keep looking for, and I can tell you exactly where they were in the house that I used to live in. but. Uh -huh. Somehow they're not to be found here. <clears throat> well, this was a nice project. I think I'm going to go feed myself. <laughs> but I thank okay. you, Judy. <laughs> Thanks a thank lot. It's a nice me. project. If you have any questions, you know how to find me, right? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to close up.
You're going to leave, Miss Liz? Go find your aprons? Bye, Liz. I only have about four different places I have to look. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. I Thank you, you for coming. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Bye -bye. Have a good day. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Judy, would you suggest shape the um, apron before we iron that on? I haven't done that yet. Yeah, I would, so that you know you get it in the center. And do I just print that piece off, and will it print will off? It print that off? Well, when you print it off, um, there should be an option that you can check where it says actual size. Okay. Okay, you need to print two pages and then paste them together. Gotcha. Okay, I'll go do that. Okay.
Betty DeBerry, when you're ready to do your hearts, I can tell you something that would seem to help. Okay. For placement, okay. placement of okay. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. This, see this thing that I have here where it's it's a stitch out right. of, of the hearts, yeah. but there's no, no fabric in them? Okay, right. it's going it's going to stitch starting like right here. And it's going to stitch that right. little curved line and then that straight yeah. line. And yeah. that straight yeah. line is the bottom of your heart. Right. And you're going to okay. cover that straight line with your fabric. Your needle's going to be here and your yeah. fabric is going to cover that straight line. Okay. Okay, so as you go around, you know, the straight line is in a different direction, but Correct. make just put the center of your fabric right over that straight line and against your needle. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I heard that. I did hear that part early on. <laughs> okay. But I, I wasn't sure when you had to go talk to get Comcast well, straightened out. It was about that time, and it was when Leslie split. Leslie split. Well, I can't talk. Les, Leslie said the straight line really helped. Okay. As far as uh, getting the fabric right. So that, and that was about when I left. Okay. So, all right. You should be good to go on the embroidery then. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry it's been such a pain. Well, it's a pain, but it's still fun. Okay, I'm ready to do the circle now. So I'm thinking if I did a stitch first, then I'd have something to follow. That make oh, it easier. To put your, oh, make just do a plain stitch first and then you'd have right. an idea where to lay your rickrack. That'll right. work. Okay. That's a good idea. Okay, thank you. Peggy, are you you doing okay? You got it all done already? You talking to me? <laughs> no, I'm talking to Peggy Wolf. Oh, Peggy, okay. Yeah. Teresa, can you hear me, Teresa? No, she can't. Can you hear me? Did you get that thing out of my basket? I can't hear you. The mic is off. No, I didn't get done yet, Judy. I had a dis I had an interruption. Oh, <laughs> okay. So I'm back. And I didn't realize I have a circle. I have a circle cutter. I did not realize, and I thought about it, and I did buy one. So I'm going to do it next with a circle cutter. Attachment, not cutter. Well, you know, 
cricket, cutter. <laughs> what can I say? I don't know. I got it mixed up with the cricket, okay? Yeah, yeah. That's easy to do. Judy, how far down did you put the circle on the center of your um, apron? Was there something that I missed in terms of where it tells you to place it? No, her her direction said just to center it. And let me, I'll get my ruler. Okay. And let's see, now I have to have glasses. Oh, I know. Uh, it's about two and a half inches down from the top. Oh, is that all? Oh, wow. Okay. And then it's about three inches from the edge after the, from the armhole part, after okay. you've cut those out, okay? Yeah, I did cut them out. Okay. I think when I was doing it, I just used my fingers and the width of all four of my fingers was what was the side measurement and then this is when i would iron it on right if i have it turned and ready to go um well you yes yes okay this and then i start working on those other strips it on. um i think i put in that page of notes that you might want to Iron it from the back so you don't smash your embroidery. Okay, but do so, we? That's where it's so I didn't think we wanted to iron that because that's that fusible. Well, you that yeah, iron iron from the back of the apron front is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Once you Can put it in place, okay. then iron from the back to fuse it. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, so often, if you iron an embroidery from the front, you mash it, and sometimes the threads will take on a shine if if you really had a hot iron. Okay. Sounds good. What I was trying to say in my inadequate way. Well, that was good. I got it. Okay. I'll be back in a minute, ladies.
Okay. How'd your, how'd your circle turn out, Miss Mary? Well, we'll see when I flip it inside out. <laughs> okay. I think okay. I think all right. It's just I'm taking off the stabilizer now, and that's a pain. Yeah, it is. But uh, has to be done, right? Yes, it does. <clears throat> and I wasn't happy with myself when I snowed, sewed those cute little snowflakes on that one strip and had to take the stabilizer out of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like Lee's idea. It just came too late for me to stitch that circle first. That would have been a good idea. I'm not yeah, sure. it was a good idea. Yeah, it, I didn't really follow it very much, though. It was This was amazing how easy it was. I thought it was going to be really hard. I think I'm going to put fray check on the end. Maybe. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, I think I'm going to go get some of that. I used my laser to try to help me. Um, but I Did it I help? Well, I think I missed. It helped me a little bit, but, you know, I do, did miss some of the, the gullies, but, oh, well. You know? I know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Well, that's good. I'm glad. Yeah. It's certainly not worth that. No. No. It's not. So are there any anything else that's really special about the uh, remainder of the project? Um, do you have the quilt binder? No. Okay. So I you're have, just, go ahead. I have the sashers. Yeah, but I, because this is, if you're going to use the sashers, then I would, um, her instructions were for the quilt binder to cut them at a one and three quarters. Yeah. And that ends up with a, a half inch um, binding. So if you were gonna do the sashers, I would cut it like two inches. Right, yeah. So well, that, you know. Because otherwise, that one and three quarters is an odd number for to try to use the sashers with. Okay. Now, the only thing you have to do is be be careful of um, when you you're ironing it to not stretch it too much because of the bias. Right. And her measurements are for a. Um, a continuous loop to go behind your head. Um, if you like one that ties, then I'd cut it in half and make it a little longer behind your neck. You know, if you like to be able to tie it and adjust it rather than having a constant measurement. And I did it according to her measurements and it actually fit pretty well. Okay. So, and the ties are certainly long enough. But she does give you measurements as to where to, <coughs> you know, sew the first tie and where to attach the armhole in and, and so forth. And it worked out really well. Okay. So that part of the instructions I thought was good. Um, the one thing which I was kind of humorous 
was that she tells you to put the first decorated strip three inches from the bottom, but she doesn't ever mention the other two strips. So what I did was to, and it's in the page and a half of notes um, on the second page, the second and third bands are placed like an inch apart. There's an inch from the first one to the second one, but I'm not measuring any of the rickrack. I'm just measuring. I'm just measuring from the edge of one piece of fabric to the edge of the next piece of fabric. That's an inch. Okay. 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 Yeah. Understand. Okay. That's so helpful. That one, pardon? That's very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> you're, welcome. you're welcome. I mean, I just thought it was kind of funny that she didn't even mention those two. I guess she got excited about going on. And I understand why she lined it because to him those the piece right at the edge where the bands are would be a pain in the patoot with the rick rack and everything in there i have really loved that binder i have been using it a lot not for well, real good quilts, but for things like a placemats and small baby quilts and I, I finally have figured it out it definitely took a lot of practice to turn the corners and stuff. Yeah. But once I got it, it's like, it's really neat. It worked really, really well on this apron. Yeah, I can see that. It'll be perfect for it. And we don't have to turn any corners. Well, do we? Just No, don't, we don't have to turn any corners. <laughs> <laughs> but I know how to do it now. It's amazing. I watch videos and I... I've been doing, I did like 10 placemats and it's amazing. I knew by the end of that. Well, good. So thanks for teaching us about that because I really enjoyed it. Well, good. I'm glad because that's not an inexpensive attachment, but it, it does do a good job. Yeah, it takes a lot of practice, but once you get it figured out, it's really neat. Like I said, I don't think I'd use it on a really nice big quilt, but for all of the little stuff I've been doing, it's been great. Yeah. I know Supatha has used hers too and got it to work like she wanted it. Yes, once you practice with it, it's it's wonderful. So how, how are you doing with your apron, darling? Miss Susie. Well, I got a circle made and I got hearts on it and and so we're we're moving on. Okay. <laughs> Betty Hoffman, are you hanging in there? Maybe she's not there right in? now. No, I'm here. Oh, good. I'm working on stuff. I just, um, I'm a slow learner, so I have to spend some time figuring this thing out. I don't have a circular attachment, so that's going to be an issue. Yeah, you just have to take it slow and draw your circle, and you'll be fine. Yeah. I'm sure. I'll, I'll figure it out, but... Um, I've got everything else pretty much ready to go, so. Okay, well, good. Thanks. I'm Betty, glad you're here. You glad borrow. you're jumping in here with us. <laughs> well, I don't know about jumping, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're at least okay, getting so your feet wet, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, getting my feet wet. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, Judy, I have a question very back at the beginning. The piece that we're okay, doing the heart on. I'm sorry? 
the piece we're doing the hearts on the circle how big a yes. piece was that cut uh, i think uh it called for an eight by eight piece of fabric okay let's see blah 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 Isn't it 10 by 12? It, uh, it's called 10 by 12, but you're putting it in the, it fits the 120 by 120 hoop, so. Right, okay. So 8, eight by 8. eight. Okay. Is plenty big. Okay. Dad gum. Well, I got the design on my sewing machine, believe it or not. Yay! Yay! We're back to kindergarten. Where, where is there a colored picture of the apron that you did, Judy? Um, uh, it's not in any of that stuff that I sent you, but I can I can send you the supply list and I can and it'd be on there. Well, uh, okay. I, you, hmm. Would you like me to do that? Yeah, yeah. If it shows the apron, I would love it if you don't mind. Or I can just flat out send you a picture, which would be bigger. Okay, either one is right. fine. All right. Thank you very much. I'd love to have the picture too. Thank you. It's also under uh, Facebook for Society. Oh, that's a good idea. Think about. It. I didn't think about I that. I don't one. use Facebook, <laughs> but I know I can see it on on yeah, Society anyway. On your website and click on Facebook and on the yes. little fire pictures, and they comes up, and then scroll through them. It's right. Down the bear. Yeah, I remember that. I remember now. I played around with some stitches and I really liked the L25 because it looks like it would stitch across the strip and look like it's the right direction like it's going down it's and it's kind of a um geometric heart so i thought that was kind of a, a cute one to try l25 yeah yeah i like that one so i'm going to do that on one of mine okay yeah i just i just for some my analness, I guess. I didn't yeah. like the ones laying sideways. Okay, Betty, I sent you an email. Yeah, I like okay, it. Thank you. It looks like it's gonna, you know, go straight across the strip the way it should. Yeah. The little girls would be good too. Or the flower pots. And you said to put a piece of, well, like we always do, put a piece of stabilizer behind that piece of fabric. Yes. Okay. Oh, Judy, it even came through on my computer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness, how can, Daddy. How can, how, can I, how can I handle this? I don't know. Oh, man. Oh. Lord have mercy. Put your ruby slippers on and click your heels. Oh, I'm going to have to. At the, oh, no, wait. Yeah, no. Oh, it came through beautifully. Oh, my gosh. Life is good. <laughs> so which fabric did you use for the circle? I used the one that looks kind of like wood, this one. Yeah, with the stripes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I use that for the circle, for the strips on the bottom, and for the binding. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, okay. how wonderful! 
So Betty, don't tell Comcast you got that email so fast. <laughs> they'll I they'll fix it so you don't. <laughs> I know. They'll I know. slow you down. I know. She when when we finally got through, she said, Do you have any suggestions for improvements? And I said, if I could just get my email a little bit faster, it would be really nice. And she said, Oh, thank you. We will try. <laughs> Gosh, it is just unbelievable some days. Mm. Way cute. It's cuter with the big apron than just seeing a little bit. I got to tell you. Leslie, I'm sorry, can you tell us what that stitch was that you used again? Do you remember? Yeah, I really liked L25 because it's hearts and I'm not necessarily a super big heart person, but I like the way they faced versus, I was looking like at the pears and the apples and I didn't like the way they went down the line. So okay. I went with this heart. And then I think L3 was just like, you know, where you put a little bit of fabric in the middle and it's kind of a starburst. And that one seemed to also look like it would, you know, line up across the piece of fabric the right direction. This this diamond one is L26. Okay. okay. L26, okay. Okay, and then I did, I did do one of the pop-up stitches. You know what numbers those are? Uh, that one was um, L45. Okay. And that's the one where you have to, it, it tells you the directions on the screen and I'll, I'll show you how to do it if you haven't done those previously or you want a review of it because you have to turn your fabric. Okay, yes, we'd love to have a review of that. Now, okay. when you put the rickrack on your strips there, is there anything special you did? You turned it, it looks like you turned it under. <laughs> yes, I'm looking, I'm looking for my leftover ends here. Um, yes, so this is, this is the strip with the rickrack sewn on it. Okay. And then, then the rickrack was turned under right at the seam and ironed okay. down. Got it. Okay. Okay. All Thank right. You. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. And let me know when you would like that little demo. Um. Uh, it's. 132 so I'm I'm, per, I'm pulling off my paper from the back that's the stage I'm at so I don't know where everybody else is yeah, you well, might as, as once I do finish the circle I'm done for it right now <laughs> because 
I'm still down off my stabilizer. <laughs> Me too. Oh. <laughs> I can do it whenever it works for everybody else. My circle's okay. done. Oh, Yay. Hi, <laughs> Hold it up again, please. You have to talk, talk and hold it up. Oops, let's see, where am I? <laughs> you're you right. Be yeah. right. And, and talk. Oh, I guess I can do. You know, okay. do. Oh. Now Oops. move it to your right. There we go. There you right there. Go. Oh, all right. Great. Marilyn, that's really cute. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks. Get that. Okay, let me get my machine awake here. He's loafing. Now, let me tell you. 45, yes. Okay. Now, 45, it wants the S foot. Okay. I should do it on the strip that had some on it. Okay. And so Okay, when I selected this stitch, come here, down at the bottom of the screen, it gives me step-by-step -step directions. Like it says, activate needle down function, press the start stop button to sew. When the machine stops, place the pop-up fabric from the right touching the needle and sew again until the machine stops. So let's do that much of it. Okay. And I'm going to move the camera back and forth. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. All right. So I'm going to start. I've got the needle down, turned on. I've got my thread knotted around my needle. Stop that. Do you have a straight line um, like marked on your fabric? Is that what that is there on the left? Yes. Okay. Right here. So that's this is, for you, the line you want to. This is the get. line that's in, in the fabric, okay? Okay. So I'm, I kind of marked one for me to follow. And if I turn my laser on and set it on zero, and I did discover that doing this, uh, I wasn't quite, I wanted to be in the middle of the lines on this. And you can see here that I, I drew a line in the middle, but because of the way this stitch works and with the extra length of the fabric, it didn't turn out quite like I wanted it to. So if you're gonna use these, pop-up stitches where you're adding extra things and you might want to do a practice if you want to you know get them centered in a specific place all right okay so we're going to use our knock the speed way down i'm going to use my start stop button and i'm going to sew and let it go until it stops
Okay, now it has stopped, and so it says place the pop-up fabric, which I've taken this little square and folded in quarters. And it's so much easier for me to do with tweezers. I use my foot up button so I can see where I'm at underneath the foot and put the fabric so the point of that folded fabric is right against the needle. Then I put my foot back down, press my start stop button and let it sew until it stops. And it just takes like three stitches sideways and back. So the folded the is the folded fabric, I can't see that well. Is it going to the right or to the left? To the right. The right. Does that help if I bring the, the foot up? It's to the right of the needle. Does that help, Les? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, I'm sorry. It's it's hard because oh, I don't I have the right. Okay, so now the third step, it says turn the project 90 degrees counterclockwise. So that's that way. I'm turning it away from me, all right? Mm -hmm. And press the start stop button. The fabric will be positioned behind the needle, which it is. It was here on the right hand side when I turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise, then it goes behind the needle. And then I'm going to sew until it stops again. So it's actually sewing on that folded piece of fabric. Come on. And turn the project back to its original position. That's not where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be over here. Uh, and sew until the machine stops again. So I, I wiggled it. We'll do it again. Okay, so now it's stopped again. I have my, I'm folding my piece of fabric, raising my presser foot up so I can see where to put this to the right of the needle. The point, folded point is touching the needle. I put the foot down, sew until it stops, turn it counterclockwise, sew until it stops, turn it back, and sew until it stops. Okay, and at that point, I would put in another piece of fabric. Up, oh, machine. Somewhere, scissors. So Judy, is there something that tells us what size to cut that little piece of fabric, and that you that you fold it in fourths? Um, I cut it at an inch. Um, it's kind of up to you if you have. Uh, because you can always come back in and trim this piece of fabric if you want it to be a different shape. Okay. Um, I liked, on this particular one, I liked it staying the, the square because then I could see more of the plaid. Um, oh, okay. But, you know, somewhere from an inch to two inches and... If you're going to trim them, then the, you know, a little bit extra is nice. And particularly if you're using um, something like uh, organza for your fabric, then you can uh, take a heat tool and trim it with that, and that'll seal the edges and it won't ravel so badly. On these, although the, the plaid is square on the pieces that I cut, the pieces are actually cut on the bias because the fabric is plaid on the bias. So when I cut my pieces on the uh, you know, square with the plaid, they were actually cut on the bias. And I cut them on the bias so they wouldn't ravel so badly. 
Okay. Does any of that help? Oh yeah. Tremendously. It's incredible. Yeah. So are we yeah. gonna be able to watch these videos again or this video again? You can, yeah. yes. That's why she's recording them. So how do we watch them? Um I think if you go on a, the website, you can find them. Right. Okay. Great. I I haven't watched any of them. Yeah, you can. And Judy, the pop-up stitches are only on the Epic 2, right? Uh, they're on the Epic 1 and Epic 2. Oh, they are on the 1? Yes, ma'am. Because I okay. use them. And I don't have you just one. don't have this, the same ones. You have there's more on the two than there are on the one. Well, but I looked up L25. It should be on the L menu. Yeah. L25 is the one that I was using, Betty. It's not a pop up. It's just a heart. I know, but I don't it's even a, have an L25. I only go to L23. Are you on the Epic? Yeah. She's on an Epic one. Well, so am I. So maybe you just didn't go down far enough in your screen. No, nope. or you oh, no. you don't have an update installed because they did oh. add some new with an update. Maybe that's oh. it. Well, I don't I I don't have anything that shows that I need to do an update, but well, sometimes you know if you look at your machine information and in settings. Right. It will tell you, or you can call me, and we we can work through that. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. So, how do they right. designate the there a pop up? I'm sorry, Betty. Do how do they de do designate that the, they are a pop up? Um, if you see them on the screen and they have a a gray part that's either a half circle or a quarter circle or a triangle. Those are those are the pop-ups. Okay. Like, do you find a little ballerina on your screen? Uh, what, which uh, category? On your L menu. L menu. Nope. No. No ballerina. No. It was there when the machine came out. I've got hearts and butterflies, and um, that's pretty much it. So, can you, excuse me, on the Epic One, does it have the sewing advisor, Joy Advisor? Yes. Where you can go to sewing and hit on dimensional stitches and then hit pop up where it'll bring up the stitches? Hmm. I don't know. Repeat all that again. Go to okay, go to go ahead, Mary. Go to the uh, Joy Advisor. Yeah. You know, and if you're under sewing, and it says select the technique, pick dimensional stitches. Joy Advisor to. Oh, I already lost it. Okay, Joy Advisor to one more time. It should say select your technique. Did you select sewing, Betty? Yeah. Okay. And sewing. Yeah. Oh, and then dimensional. Right. Uh huh. Oh, oh wow. Well, now I've got. I can see that. But it mm -hmm. pop up stitch. Yeah. If you, if you click on that, it'll take you to sewing and it'll show you your pop up stitches. Right. It did. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Mary. Now, if I can just read my writing. <laughs> I swear. 
<laughs> Judy. Yes. On the on those three inch strips, what width of uh, seams did you do on the side? A quarter inch. Um. Let's see. Keep losing stuff here. Actually. <laughs> I used um, yes, it is a quarter inch, and that's a that's about half of your rick rack of the rick rack. Okay. If you're using the the medium rick rack. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wondered for sure. Yeah, a quarter inch works. All right, good. You're you're our encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> I think some pages like are missing. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else special on this we need to know? Um, did you hear my speech about where to put the straight, the bands at the bottom? Yes, I did. Because, okay, because she only talks about the bot first one. Yeah, and you put it on, on that one, the sheet where there's one and a half pages. Distance, yes, I, I thought I read yes. it somewhere. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah. if you want, you know, if you would want the piece of the ties that goes behind your head mm -hmm. to be able to tie rather than just being a solid piece, right. then I would, you know, scoot the you know, more of the tie toward the top of the apron rather than so much as a, a waist tie. Okay. Because she has it as one whole piece, which I was amazed actually fits pretty well. Oh, well, that's good. Using her measurements that are in the Viking instruction. Oh, <laughs> well, that's good to know. I see part of Carol. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I'm going to go. So appreciate it, Judy. Thank you for being here and letting us see your pretty sewing room. My goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah, Carolyn. it's pretty special. I love it. Incredible. <laughs> Good okay, to see well, you. Right. Stay, everybody stay, stay healthy. Thanks. All Bye. right. If you have any questions, you know how to find me, Miss Marilyn. Okay. Marilyn. Thanks, Judy. Bye, Leslie. Bye, You're Marilyn. welcome. Bye. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. -bye. Do you know what we're going to do next month yet? Uh, no, but, um, Lee was, when I was talking about adding, um, yeah, that's some tie stitches and so forth, this, right. this month our project was from the, um, Viking workbook. Next month I was thinking maybe we could do the one from the Foth workbook which involves um, decorative stitches and we can do some programming. And I think it's um, the two machines are close enough together. I mean, that this close yeah. enough in function that we can do both of them. Right. Um, and they, they have a, a kind of a cute little pin cushion made with the, um, decorative stitches ah. so i'll see okay. what carol thinks about that and we'll go from there and and if you have any requests or suggestions i'm totally open okay. for that the only suggestion if is there's some you know if there's some some kind of project you would like or some kind of function you would like to learn yeah Okay. All right, I think I'm going to leave, but here's my circle. Beautiful. Oh, oh. Where you, Mary? Oh, that's, oh that's great, Mary. Yeah, well, I didn't do the 
the back right, but that's all right. You can't see the back. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you didn't do it right? What happened? Yeah, never mind. I don't want to talk okay. Myself, but, but anyway, well, you got that. You got I the got concept, it. right? That looks there good. You, you could use yeah. that for a doily. There you go. All right, ladies. I better, hopefully, I won't just stick this as another unfinished project. But Amen. I'll, I'll catch that. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. Hi, Mary. Uh, well, thank you, Mary. Thank you for your help and advice and information. No problem. Appreciate it. I don't do as much as you do. Thanks, Judy. Hi, ladies. Thank you. Bye. 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 Judy, I was. I see Lee. I did finally finish. Uh, what is that? Bag. Yeah. Oh, oh, cool. Pretty. Oh, cool. Yeah, very that. nice. Are those buttons or what? Oh, that's um. What is that's those? A other project, but then I just did a flat project bag out of it. Oh, I like those. That's a so really. That's, that's not. Very good job, Lee. I finally finished it. <laughs> Great. Really nice. Finished is good. Yes, finished is good. That's what reminded me when. <laughs> Mary said that. <laughs> yes, I finally finished it. So what is yeah. that, Lee? Well, thanks for showing. Bag. It's just a flat project bag, but this was one of our other classes where we did the middle, all of the programming. The initial, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. So, turned out well. Mm, yes, it did. Yeah. It's a nice, pretty colors. But, so, anyway, thank you. Thank you. Fun. Betty Hoffman, I see your face. <laughs> You're muted. Betty. Your mic is off. There we go. Oh, there you are. Okay. How goes it? I didn't get much done, so I have everything in progress, but um, I plan to work on it this week. All right. Are you comfortable with what you have to do? Do you still yeah. have questions? Yeah, I have questions about the uh, uh, Bon Appetit uh, section of it, but like I said, I don't have a circular thing, so I'm in the process of deciding how I'm going to use that, but just without that particular piece of equipment, unless I get a chance to go get that this week. So, it's but I'm making a reversible. Okay. Uh, I'm making a reversible apron, so we'll see. But Betty, you can borrow okay. mine. Too. Great. Well, thanks for being with us. Okay. And thanks for the class, Judy. They're always informative. I enjoyed it. Well, good. Yeah. I'm glad you're in, you're jumping in here. Yeah. Not okay. into too deep of water yet, but we'll get there. <laughs> We've all That's been all there. right. We've got to take that slow. That's right. <laughs> There's lots Everybody to learn. Everybody enjoy their week. Enjoy your week. Thanks. Thanks, thanks yeah, Judy. Bye-bye. Thank you, Leslie. You okay with what we have left? Yeah, I'm just gonna start working on those strips because I've got a little time since um, nobody's at my house today. So I'm gonna keep working for a little while and see how much further I can get. But yeah, this was great, and the pin cushion sounds fun. I mean, it yeah. just sounds like a little project sounds good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one was a little bigger than we anticipated. Yeah. yeah it's nice. Fun, and an apron so i like it yeah oh good all so right to, to do to do a talk, talk later, later. Talk later bye betty, betty. Bye, betty okay. deberry take care bye. you too good seeing your face bye miss betty you too bye i'm glad you got your podcast straightened out <laughs> yeah well we'll see um but thank you very much okay. Judy. i really appreciate the class and we'll see what happens next Okay, well, you know how okay. to find me if you have some questions. Okay, thanks again. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Stay safe. Thanks, Judy. This has been fun. Okay, Lee, thank you. Thank yeah, you for I, your help, your suggestions. Oh, you know, the, the reason... Show and tell. 
sure. The um, the quilt label thing that I had talked about, the reason that came up was because I had seen a FAF presentation of it and I couldn't translate it into the epic. So I was trying to figure out, you know, like the shape creator and that type of stuff and putting borders on. So would we do that type of stuff with the uh, pincushion, you think? Um, no, that pincushion is more sewing than embroidery. Okay. Okay. Um, not that you can't, well, the shape creators, how the Bon Appetit thing was made. Right. So, so think, um, like, do we have a way to put borders on things in Epic? Because I saw it at yeah, the, uh, yeah, I, yeah. You can, you can use like the shape creator to do that. Okay. Good, good. All right. Well, thank you for everything. Thank you. You have a good day and be safe, please. Okay. You too. Stay All right. Healthy. Thanks. Okay. Bye. I'll try. Bye bye. Okay, Miss Miss Carol, can you hear me? Maybe not. Ah, texture. Thank you. Dang. Carol, can you hear? We're done. Did you have fun? Yeah, we didn't get finished, but we had fun. All right. And Betty, Betty DeBerry got her uh, email fixed, so she had to call Comcast. Okay, yeah, because she was, uh, man, I don't know what the heck was going on. Yeah. Because I emailed three times, and then she couldn't get in. And hmm? I know. It's so small. Well, yeah. Actually, can, mine may be this long. I like having a big one and a small one. So if you got to move it around a little bit, you yeah. have that small one with your gizmos uh, in. I just find it, it's so irritating because it doesn't hold enough things. Hold enough, yeah. Yeah. So I probably need a second one. Yeah, exactly. Denise, I okay. gave her the shirt mm -hmm. and the card today. Oh, yeah? Was today her birthday or was it yesterday? Uh, it was yesterday. Okay. Oh, you're fine. Go ahead. You're fine. Okay. It's a little busier today than yesterday. Oh, okay. Well, remind yeah. Teresa to get her package out of my basket, please. Well, I think she got it, didn't she? I don't know whether she did or not. Everybody says these are the best masks ever. Well, good. I'm glad. Do you want to stop yeah. the recording? Okay. Oh, yeah, we should stop this.